Copyright in these lectures is either owned by the ANU or a third party who has licensed the ANU to use it. Students may use the recording for personal study only. No lecture may be communicated online, copied or shared without the prior permission of the ANU. All right, guys, so let's get started with today's topic. So today we're going to talk about uh, binomial option pricing models. And we're going to do two types of questions. The first one is with two-step binomial tree, and the second question is three-step binomial tree. All right, so we're going to start with the simple one. The question says, you have been researching the resource industry over the past few weeks, and you are certain that the share price of companies within this industry will fall over the next 10 months. As a result, you have decided to buy a put option on BHP Billiton, and the put option has a strike price of 35 and will expire in 10 months. It also tells you the current share price of BHP is $30 per share, and volatility on BHP is 30% per annum, right? And the risk-free rate of interest is 5%, bracket, all interest rates are continuously compounded. So there are two parts to this question. The first part says, Assume the put option is a European style and using the binomial option pricing model to find the value of this put option, right? So, and you, you were told that you can assume two steps of five months each, okay? And the part B says, now assume it is American style puts and calculate the current value of this put option, okay? So the first step with, with this sort of question is always to find the proportional increase and proportional decrease of the share price for each step, okay? In other words, we need to find there's a little u and a little d here. So going back to the question, we are given some information. So we were told the underlying volatility is 30% per annum, right? And we also told that we can assume five months for each step. And based on this equation, we know the little u, the proportional increase, is a function of the volatility as well as the time, the time interval of each step, okay? And the little d here is simply the reciprocal of the little u. Because we were given the volatility is 30%, and we can assume the five months for each step, so if we plug in these two numbers into this equation, and we we'll get the little u is 1.21367, okay? So the way we express, because this is continuous compounded, the way we express this time interval for each step, the delta t here is 5 over 12, okay? Now what is the little d? What is the proportional decrease? The proportional decrease is just the reciprocal of the u. And it work out to be 0 0.2394, all right? So once we have the proportional increase and decrease, the next step is to draw the tree. Right, so the way we draw the tree is going back to the question we were told the spot price for BHP is $30, right? In other words, the current share price is $30. And we're going to take this $30 and we're going to multiply by the proportional increase, which is uh, 1.2136, right? So we take this $30 and we multiply by 1.2136, we get a share price up here at the not B, 36.41. And we then we take the same stock price and we multiply by the proportional decrease, 0 0.82394, we get the share price down here, $24.72. All right? So you basically repeat the same step to work out the branches for the second step. All right? So it's very mechanical. You just repeat the same step to work out the branches for the second step. So once we have obtained the whole tree, the next thing you should do immediately, which is also very trivial to do, is to work out the put option payoff for each terminal price. You have to work out the payoff 
for each expiry date share prices. For instance, up here, when we have up, up, we end up with a share price 44 and 19 cents, right? So what is our strike price? Our strike price is $35. So the current sh this, this share price is above the strike price, and as the holder of the put option, we should walk away, we simply let the put option lapse with the value of zero, right? So the payoff is zero. Now, when the share price end up in the middle, $30, it's $5 in the money, right? So the payoff is $5. And down here, this put is deeply in the money. And it's way below the strike price, 35 and it provides us a payoff of $14.63, right? So once you have obtained the whole tree, the next step immediately is to write down the payoff for each expiration date share prices. Does that make sense? Yeah? Then the next step is to calculate, the third step is to calculate your risk neutral probability. The risk neutral probability is denoted in P star here. Okay? So the way we calculate risk neutral probability is simply e to the risk free rate multiplied by the time interval for each step and we minus d. So that's in the numerator. In the denominator, we have u minus d, right? We have u and we have d. We were told interest rate is 5%, and we're splitting this 10 months tree into five months each step, so that's five over 12. So we work out the risk neutral probability that share price will go up is 50.55. So there is 50.55% chance the share price will move up and once subtract the, the P star, give us the risk neutral probability the share price will move down. Right, so we have two uh, probability here. So the nice thing with the risk neutral probability is that we can work out the risk neutral expect, uh, we can work out the risk neutral expect payoff of the options. And then the nice thing with that is that when we discount the expect payoff, back in time, we can simply use the risk-free rate of interest as our discounting factor. And we don't have to worry about estimating the discount factor by using asset pricing models, right? Because basically, we're just pretending we're all risk-neutral investors, we don't, we don't need additional risk premium. And all the required rate of return we need for is simply the risk-free rate. I'll come back to this point when we do the calculation, right? So just bear in mind, we're now stepping into this risk neutral world. And all investors are risk neutral. That's my point. Okay, so the first part asks us to value this put option as if it's the European style. And there are two ways we can do this. So the first method is to tediously walk from the far right to the far left. We slowly walk on each branch, and then we value the option at the branch. So that this is more kind of more tedious way to do it. So once we get hang of it, we can move on to the second method, which is we're going to discount the expect payoff of the option from the terminal point all the way back to the present time. We're just going to do the whole calculation within one goal. That's our second method, all right? But the second method only applies to European put option, okay? So that's just basically what I said. We're going to work from the right to the left, and we're going to work on each branch at a time. So we're going to start with the upper right branch. So we're going to start with this branch here. Right, so what do we know about this branch? We know that when there is a two consecutive up movement, up, up, our share, our share price end up being 44 and 19 cents. This put option is out of money, right? So you produce a payoff of zero. Well, if up and down give us the share price of $30, the payoff is $5. Right? So what are the probability we're getting this two share price? We know from the risk neutral probability, uh, just let me check, there is 50.55% chance the share price move up, and there is 49, 42% chance the share price will be moving down. And we have the payoff of that two states, right? So what we can do is we can calculate the expect payoff of this put option for this branch. So the way we do that is by using the probability of moving up will get a share price of 44 and 19 cents. That gives us option payoff of zero because that finished out of money. 
And then we have 49.42% percent chance the share price will be moving down to $30, and that gave us an option payoff of $5. Then the probability weighted average of these two is the expected payoff of this put option for that branch. However, because we're sitting here, we're sitting in a not B, we're sitting here thinking, what is the discounted value, right? So what we need to do, watch my mouse, is we need to discount this expect payoff back in five months, right? We're gonna discount back five months. Well, that's precisely what I'm doing. I'm discounting this probability weighted expect payoff, sorry, probability weighted payoff back five months. So that's five over 12. And because we are all risk neutral investors, our required rate of return is the risk-free rate of interest. So that's your 5%. So we discounted back five months, we get the discounted expect payoff is $2.42, okay? So $2.42 is the value of this put option at not B. So we're gonna write $2.42 at not B here. Uh, what I wanna say is that because this payoff is zero, right? So this comes down to zero. In the exam situation, to save a bit of time, you don't have to write out these components, okay? Just for complicity, uh, I, I, wrote, I, uh, I wrote here. But you don't have to write it. So we get this discounted option payoff, $2.42, and I wrote here at not B. So next, we're gonna focus on the lower right, uh, sorry, the, the lower right of the branch, which is this one here. So we have 50.55, percent chance the share price is going to move up to $30 and we get a payoff of $5, right? Because the strike price is $35 and the share price is $30, so $5 below the strike, so that's the payoff of $5 and we have 49.42 percent chance the share price moved down and this time our put option is deepening the money and give us a payoff of $14.63, okay? Again, it is the prob probability weighted average of these two, so that is our expect payoff, and we're gonna bring back five months to not C, okay? So that's what I'm doing here, I'm discounting this component five months back to not C, because we're standing here, we're thinking, what is the discounted payoff, right? So we have to discount back five months, and we get uh, the option value at not C is $9.56. So we're gonna write $9.56 here. Right, so I wrote here. So the last step is to focus on the far left branch, which is the final branch here. Again, we know there's 50.55 chance moving up and 49.42 chance moving down. And once move up, our option has a value of $2.42. Once moving down, we have a greater value, $9.56. So it's trivial to calculate the expect payoff. Sorry, the, the expect payoff, yes. Then we need to discount back another five months, right? So we're splitting this 10 months tree into five months each step. So we'll bring it back five months and we get the put option price is $5.82. And we write this price at not A, right? So that's one way to value this European put, which is to tediously walking from the right to the left at each branch. But um, there is a quicker way. The quicker way is we're going to discount the payoff at the terminal point within one goal. We're just going to discount that back 10 months back within one goal. Okay, because the reason why we can do that is because if you're looking at this tree, we know there's only one way we can get to this share price, 44 and 19 cents, right? So two consecutive up, 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 get us to 44 and 19 cents. There's only one way up, and there's only one way down, two consecutive down. Down, down, we get the share price $20.37, right? However, to get to the $30, there are two ways we can get to the $30, right? Which is up, down, and down, up. So in other words, there is a duplicate calculation here, correct? So just let me repeat. To get $0 payoff, we need two up step. And to get the $5 payoff, that involves one up and one down, or one down or one up. 
but essentially the probability of that is same. So there's a duplicate calculation, and there's only one way we can get the payoff of $14.63, which is two consecutive down, right? Sorry, which is down, down. So we can take advantage of that. What we can do is that we figure out there's only one way up, which is up, up. So what is the pass probability of that? The pass probability, we know the up movement probability is 50.55, right? So two up is just simply 50.55 squared, right? So that represents the pass probability of up, up. And we figure out there are two ways we can get to the $30, which would give us a pay of $5, right? Which is up, down, and down, up. But essentially, this is the same. So what we can do is we can use two multiplied by 50.55 multiplied by 40.42, right? So this one step kind of representing this two step here, because this is duplicate calculation. And there's only one way we can get to a terminal price of $20.37, which is down, down. And what is the pass probability of that? The pass probability is 49.49 squared, right? So that's down multiplied by down. Okay, so if we can do that, then we can calculate the expected payoff of this put option for this terminal prices. Then we can discount this entire component 10 months back within one goal. Remember in the previous method, we discount five months back at each step. This time, I highlight in the red, we're gonna discount it within one goal, 10 months. So that's 10 over 12, and we're using the risk-free rate. You will get the same European put option price, $5.82. Does that make sense? Again, because that's zero, save a bit of time. In the exam situation, you don't have to write it out. Does it make sense, the second method? We do it within one goal. Basically, we'll figure out the expect payoff of this option at the terminal point, and then we'll realize there is a duplicate calculation step here, and we can simply use two multiply the product of these two to take care of this up, down, and down, up, right? And then we just discount this whole thing 10 months back to the present time, and we'll get the put option price is $5.82. That makes sense, right? Okay, so we've done the European one, so let's have a look at the American put option. Remember, the part B of this question says, assume this is American style put option. The European put option is quite easy because we know all the action is going to happen at one point in time, which is at the maturity date, right? Because the European put option holder will not exercise their put op cannot exercise their put option early. So we can discount those expect payoff within one go. However, the American option holder is a bit tricky because you never know when they are going to exercise, right? You never, you never know when the American put option holder is, is going to exercise their put option. So there's one little extra step involved with American style pools is that whenever we get a discounted expect payoff of that put option, we need to compare, we need to compare that with the intrinsic value of that put option in that point in time. So the intrinsic value is the strike price minus the share price. And the intrinsic value represents the value of exercising the put option now whereas the discounted expect payoff of the put option represent the value of holding on to that put option. So basically we compare two decisions here, whether we should hold on to the option or we should excess now, right? So if the intrinsic value is greater than the discounted expect payoff, which means the value of accessing to now is greater than holding on to it, then writing on the knot, we should write down the intrinsic value instead of the discounted payoff. Does it make sense? I will, I will um, emphasize this point uh, when we do the calculation here. So with American put option, we have no choice but to tediously work back on each branch because we need to compare the intrinsic value with discounted expect payoff. So again, 
we're going to start, yeah, so that's basically what I said. So one extra little step is at each node, we need to check and see if this put option price is less than its intrinsic value. In other words, whether the value of holding on to it is less than the value of exercising this put option now. If it is, then we would choose to access the put option and we will write the intrinsic value on the tree instead of the calculated option value, instead of the discounted option value. Does that make sense? All right. So that's just a bit of a recap. Um, we've done the calculation for little u and a little d, and we also calculate the risk neutral probability, right? So I'm just putting this information back to the slides. Again, we're going to start with the upper right. So upper right, we know there's 50.58. The share price is going to end up high and give us payoff zero. And we have 49.42. Uh, share price is going to end up 30, give us payoff of $5. Then what we do is we're going to discount back five months, because we're sitting here thinking about this whole thing, so we should discount back five months to this point. And we get uh, a value of $2.42. But before you write down this $4.42 at not B, one thing is to check the intrinsic value. Well, the share price at not B is $36.41, right? And remember, our strike price is $35. So the share price is above our strike price. This is out of money put, right? So we should not excise. So in other words, we should choose the larger value between the two, and given this is negative value, the intrinsic value at that point in time is in fact zero. In other words, holding on to this option provides you more value than exercising the option now. So after comparing, we should still write down $4.42 at not B. Yes, so this sentence just uh, reiterate what I just said. So at this point, the share price is $36.41, right? So this share price is above the strike, 35 in other words, this, is, this put option is out of money at this point. And the intrinsic value is zero, right? You should not excise it. But holding on this put option, there are still some chance the share price might fall below 35 strike. So that worth something, and that was $2.42. Therefore, we should hold on to this put option and win and see what happened, right? So we're going to write $2.42 uh, $2 here. So that's what I did, I write $2.42. Then we're gonna focus on the lower right, we're gonna focus on the lower right branch here. Again, we know there's uh, 50.55, we're gonna end up with share price 30, pay of $5, and we, we have 49.42 probability, the share price gonna end up $20.37, give us a whopping payoff of $14.63. Then we have to discount back five months. We're sitting here thinking about it, so we should discount back five months to not C, and we get uh, the discount of values, $9.56. Right, but before you write down this $9.56 at not C, let's check what is the intrinsic value at that point in time. So at not C, we have share price of 24.72 cents, right? So the share price at that point is lower than the strike. And that gave us an intrinsic value of $10.28. And that $10.28 represents the value of, of exercising this put option now. And it turns out, exercising this put option now is more valuable than holding on to this put option. Right? So after comparing, we should choose to exercise this put option now, and we should write down the intrinsic value of $10.28 at this, at this not C here, instead of this discounted payoff $9.56. All right? So that's just what I said. For the subsequent calculation, we need to use the intrinsic value $10.28 because excise the option early is more valuable than holding on to this put option. So I wrote uh, $10.28 here. All right? Now we'll get to the last step, which is to uh, discount back to the present. Again, uh, we have 50.58 chance the share price going down, give us a value of $2.42, and there is 49.42 chance share price going down, and that leads to the intrinsic value of $10.28, and we bring it back five months to not A, the present time, 
and the present time is $6.17. If you compare the American put option price to that of the European counterpart, you would realize that American stock option indeed sell more than that of the European counterpart, right? Because basically American option give you all the rights uh, that a European option holder has, and what's more is that you can access early. And that additional flexibility is reflected in the option price, right? So $6.17 is more than the European counterpart, $5.82. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's have a look uh, the next question, which is three-step binomial tree. Again, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the same question for European, then we're gonna do the same question for American. <clears throat> so the question says a stock is currently priced hundred dollars. In any given three months period, stock price would either go up thirteen point thirty one percent or it will go down by 11.75%. And the risk, riskless rate of interest is 5% per annum continuously compounded. And this put option is written on this stock with $110 strike price and nine months to expiry, right? So each step is three months, and this put option has nine months to expiry, so we're splitting this into three steps, and each step take up three months, yes? So the Part A of the question says, assume this put option is European style, calculating the option price. And then the second question says, assume this is American style, calculate uh, the option price. And this part says, you know, you can use whatever method you like, but maybe the quickest way is the better way, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna discount the expected payoff from those terminal prices back to the present within one goal. It's going to bring it back nine months straight because that's the easier way, right? Okay, so step number one, again, is finding the little u and the little d, which is the proportional increase and the proportional decrease. Remember in the previous question, you were told the volatility, right? And you also know the time interval of each step. So you're using the equation to work out little u and a little d. But here the question just gives you a straight away it tells you that either it would go up 13.31 or it would go down 11.75. So the little u is just the one plus 13.31, right? And the little d is just one minus 11.75. So that's our little u and the little d, proportional increase and the proportional decrease. And the second step is always to draw the tree, right? So how do we draw the tree? We were told that the current share price is $100 and $100 multiplied by the proportional increase, 1.1, uh, 1, sorry, 1 1.1331, that give us the share price of this much, up here, right? Then we take this $100, we multiply by the proportional decrease, 0 0.8825 give us the share price, $88.25 down here. Basically, we just repeat the same process for the second step of the tree and the third step of the tree. So three steps, and each step takes three months. All right, as I mentioned, you have, you have to have this good habit is that once you have drawn the tree, the next thing you should do immediately is to work out the payoff for each the terminal share price, share price here, which is quite easy to do. So remember the strike price is 110, right? So up, up, up here, three up, we end up with the share price 145, and that's way above the strike price, 110, right? So payoff is zero, out of money puts. Up, up and down, and there's other way to get to this share price, I'll get back to that later, but at this point, still above the strike price, 110, right? So this put option finish out of money, payoff is zero. And here is in the money, because 88.25 is below the, uh, 110 strike price, give us a payoff, uh, $21.75, and down here, this put is deeply in the money, give us a payoff of 41 and 27 cents. Yes? All right, third step is to work out the risk neutral probability, the P star. 
So again, the formula in the numerator is e to the r multiplied by the delta t. Delta t is the time interval of each step. So this times three months, so that's e to the 0 0.05 multiplied by 3 over 12, and minus the little d. So in the denominator is the difference between u and d. So we work out the risk neutral probability the share price move up is 51.91. Uh, and then 1 minus this give us the probability of moving down, right? So 48.09. Okay, so if we, if we go back to this tree, um, if we analyze the past probability, we would realize there's only one way we can get to this 145, right? Which is three consecutive up, 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 and up, right? So there's only one way to get to this 145, and there's only one way to get to this uh, 6873, right? Which is three consecutive down, 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 and down. So what are some of the passes that we can get to uh, 113? Well, there is up, up, down, or there's uh, up, down, up, or maybe there's down, up, up. There are three passes that we can get to this uh, 113, right? But if you analyze that carefully, you realize in order to get to this $113 share price, you always involve two up and one down, correct? You always involve two up and one down. So that's what I wrote here. In order to get to this 11 and 13 share price, there are three ways we can get to there. Up, up, down, up, down, up, or down, up, up. I think there's a typo there, so please fix the typo on the slides. Right, so, but either, I mean, either way, it, it's always involved two up and one down, right? So that's something we can work on. Now go back to here. There's also three passes which we can get to 80, sorry, 88 and 25 cents, which is uh, down, down, up, or down, up, down, right? Or up, down, down. So all of those three ways involve two down and one up, correct? As I mentioned, down, down, up, down, up, down, and up, down, down. So all of those three passes always involve two down and one up. So that's something we can take advantage of. So remember here, we try to do this within one goal. We we'll try to work out expect payoff at terminal price distribution. Then we discount it back nine months. As I mentioned, there's only one way to get to the top, which is three consecutive up, right? So to power of three reflect the fact that there's uh, three consecutive up to get to this high share price, 145, and give us a payoff of zero. And as I mentioned earlier, in order to get to this $113, which is this point here, it's always involved two up and one down, right? So 0 0.5191 square, reflect the fact it always involves two up and multiply by one down, and this is all the money put, so that's zero there. And this step is going to happen three times. So we three multiplied by this whole component. So just basically duplicate calculation here. And there are three passes leads to a share price of 88.25, which is this one here, down, down, up, down, up, down, and up, down, down, so all of those always involve two down, right? So 48, uh, sorry, 0 0.4809 0 square reflect the fact it's always involved two down movements, and that's your one up movement. And this is going to happen three times, and give us a payoff of 21.75 cents, and there's one way we can go down, which is three consecutive down. So that's power to three, right? So that's the probability of going down. Power to three reflect the fact that's three consecutive down. So we get the expect, expected option payoff at the terminal at its expiry date share price is $12.42. Then all we need to do is to discount back nine months, which is nine over 12, right? So we're just gonna discount from this point nine months back to the present, okay? So we get the present value is uh, 11 points, 
and eleven dollar and ninety seven cents. Right, so we just we did that with one step. Pretty similar with the two step, right? Just to work out the tricky thing here is to work out what are some of the passes leads to each terminal price. But if you have the tree, it's quite easy to find the passes, right? Then we can just discount it back within one goal. So that's your European put. Again, in the exam situation, to save a bit of time, you don't have to write those two components because they end up zero anyway, right? So you just need to write those parts. Okay, so the next bit, uh, part B says, assume this is American style put option. If this put option is American style, we cannot just focus on the expiry date distribution of the share price, right? We have to work back tediously from the far right to the far left, and we're going to calculate the put option price at each branch, and we also need to check uh, whether or not this put option should be excised at, at those branch, branch, right? So the extra step involved is to compare the value of excising now versus holding on to the put option. So if the value of excising now is greater, we should write the intrinsic value at the node of the tree instead of the discounted uh, option payoff. Remember, that's what we've done for the previous question. So we're going to do the same thing here. Right, because uh, this two finish with a payoff of zero, right? And this is finish zero as well. So we can pretty much ignore this part, right? We can start with this branch here because these two are zero anyway, right? So if you do that, you're gonna get zero here. And this share price finished out of money anyway. So we can start right here with this branch. Okay, so uh, we're sitting at the knot one and thinking about this whole thing we know there's a 51.91 chance the share price go up, give us a payoff of zero, and we know there's 48.09% chance the share price going down, and give us a payoff of 2175. So again, we're gonna discount it back to not one. Remember, each step, three months, so discount it back three months, and that's three over 12, and give us this discounted payoff, $10.33. But before I write this on not, I need to compare uh, this value with the intrinsic value, right? So the share price is $100, and the, the strike price is 110 right? So that's $10 in the money. But holding on to this option provides us more value than exercising this option now. So we, we choose the bigger value here. So we write down $10.33 at not one here, all right? instead of the intrinsic value, because the intrinsic value is lower. Exercising this option now is lower. Okay? Then we work on this branch, and again, that's the probability of going up. Going up give us a payoff 2175. Probability going down, going down give us a whopping payoff 4127. And we're just gonna discount it back three months with risk-free interest, right? So that gives us the discount payoff, $30.75. Again, we need to compare. So at not two, the share price is $77.88. The strike price is 110, right? So in other words, the intrinsic value is the difference between the strike and the share price is 32 and 12 cents. So intrinsic value is higher than the discount payoff. Right? So that tells us exercising this put option now is more valuable than holding on to it. So we should write this bigger value, the intrinsic value, 32.12 at not 2 here, right? So that's what we did. We write 32 and $32.12 at not 2. Then we're tediously walking back. We focus on branch 3. So branch 3. Uh, we have a payoff of zero here. You finish out of money, remember? And when it's moved down, we have share price $10, and $10 give us uh, the, discount, the discount value of $10.33. And we discount it back three months, 
right? So discount back three months here, and we get the discount value is four dollar ninety one. Then again, we have to compare the intrinsic value, compare that with intrinsic value. So right now, share price is hundred thirteen dollars, which is above the strike hundred ten. So basically, this is out of, uh, so the intrinsic value at the moment is zero, right? So accessing now, uh, sorry, hold on to this put option, give us more value compared to access now. So we should write four dollar ninety one at not three, correct? Instead of the intrinsic value. So that's what I did. I wrote four dollar ninety one at not three. All right. Next. So we're sitting at not four, and we know there is a fifty one ninety one chance share price move up, and forty eight point zero nine chance share price moving down, and that's the payoff in those two situations. We discount it back. We we'll get a discount payoff, twenty dollar fifty five cents, right? But before we write down the tree, we we'll check the intrinsic value. Strike price one hundred ten, current share price eighty eight twenty five. So intrinsic intrinsic value is the difference of the two. That's twenty one dollar seventy five cents, and that is higher than the discounted uh, option value, right? In other words, exercising this put option now is more valuable than holding onto it. So we should write. Twenty-one dollars seventy-five cents at not four. Okay, so that's what I did. Finally, we get to the last step, basically just repeating what we've done. Okay, so the last step is to discount this back three months. Okay, so where we get those value? Those value is by slowly working back, right? And if we discount that, we get twelve dollar and eighty-five cents. Again, don't forget to compare the intrinsic value. Current share price hundred dollars, so that's ten dollar in the money. And holding on to this option is more valuable, right? So that's that's your uh, American put option price. And remember, the European one sell for eleven and ninety seven cents, right? So again, American put option sell more than that of its European counterpart. So it's not difficult; it's just very tedious and mechanical, right? So after some practice, it's quite quite straightforward. All right, we still have um, we still have a bit of time, so I want to clarify several things. So let's close this, and going back to week three's workshop. So in the week three workshop, I I mentioned something like when you design the swap diagram. Uh, there are several ways, but in this unit, uh, we want you to do the swap design in one very specific way. All right? Do you guys still remember this question? Okay, cool. So basically, we have two coming here, right? Telstra and Tesla Auto. So this is what Telstra can can get from Telstra local bank fixed rate five percent, floating BBSW minus zero point one percent, right? And then we have another company, Tesla Auto. Tesla Auto. Uh, the lowest the fixed rate the Tesla can get is seven percent. The floating rate is PBSW plus zero point seven. And then we work out the difference. The difference is one point two. And because the swap bank take twenty basis point cut, so that's fifty basis points to each party. Okay. And the way we design this is to keep the floating um, unchanged. All right. So how do you get this? Floating, you sh it should be based on um, the Tesla auto because Tesla auto at the end of the day, Tesla auto need to repay the floating rate, right? So we need to use uh, the Tesla auto's floating rate repayment as the basis uh, to to put the floating rate on the top. Okay, so in other words, Telstra should pay the swap bank BBSW plus 0.3, and swap bank pass passing that rate. To tell uh, to Tesla Auto, then Tesla Auto can just use that rate repay uh, his floating loan, right? So once we have done that, we need to figure out what sort of rate the swap bank should pay Telstra in order to improve Telstra life better by 0.5 percent, right? Because Telstra uh, is kind of adding 0.8 percent on the on the top of this to pay the swap bank, 
right? So uh, the rate, the lowest possible rate that Telstra can get is 5%. So we have to pay a Telstra 6.3, which is 1.3 more than 5% in order to compensate 0.8% that Telstra put on the top of this, as well as the 0.5% uh, improvement, right? So where does this 1.3 come from? There are two components. There's 0.8% is the one that will simply compensate uh, Telstra the fact that Telstra is adding 0.8 to pay the swap bank. And the other 0.5% is the 0.5% that we wish to improve for Telstra. So what, tel what the swap bank should pay Telstra is 6.3%. So that's 1.3 more than what Telstra needs to repay on his fixed loan. Okay? But at the end of the day, Telstra is better off by 0.5%, yes? And then we can work backwards, we can, because Swap Bank is going to take 0.2% cut, so Telstra should pay the Swap Bank 6.5%, while if we compare the 6.5% to the lowest possible fixed rate that Tesla Auto can ever get, 7%, Tesla Auto is improved by 0.5, okay? So this is the universal way that you should work out the swap design. I will upload uh, this version of the solution to the Moodle, okay? So everybody should follow this method, which is to fix the floating rate on the top. You shouldn't touch that. Then what we do is manip manipulating the fixed rate at the bottom to improve the both party by whatever percentage you work out. Does that make sense? And this floating rate should be based on this pass order company because at the end of the day, pass is the one needs to repay the floating rate loan, right? So we check the Tesla auto need to replay BBSW, uh, BBSW plus 0.7. So that's the basis that Telstra should pass it onto the swap bank, swap bank passing on to, Telstra, uh, to Tesla auto. All right, five minutes left. I'd like to quickly talk about uh, the, the valuation of currency swap because I, I wasn't able to finish in week three. So uh, valuation of the currency swap, I would say it's easier compared to the interest rate swap because Effectively, what you're doing is you're evaluating two fixed coupon paying bonds, all right? Effectively, what you do is you're valuing two fixed coupon paying bonds. Then you, the last step is simply to compare the value of these two bonds to work out the value of this currency swap, okay? So uh, everything, so everything should be denominated in a domestic currency, the domestic currency is dollar, all right? So if you are receiving U.S. dollars, so you take, you take a loan position in the U.S. dollar bonds. If you are paying the foreign currency, means you are shorting the foreign currency bonds. So that's the foreign currency denominated bond. But that has to be converted back to dollars because it will compare apple with apple, orange with orange, right? So that has to be converted back to dollar, domestic currency. Then compare with the U.S. dollar loan that we are taking a loan position in. So that's the value swap. Well, alternatively, if you are receiving a foreign currency bond, it's kind of like taking loan position in a foreign currency bond that's there, and you are paying the U.S. dollar, so you are paying, so that's going away, so that's U.S. dollar bonds. But again, you need to convert that into domestic currency, which is dollar. Compare Apple with Apple here, okay? So this question says, suppose that some time ago, uh, Macquarie Bank, the swap bank, has entered into a currency swap that it will receive 5% 5, uh, 5 per annum in yen and pay 8% per annum in dollar, right? So basically, we are shorting dollar, we are taking loan position in the foreign currency bond here, right? And the principal of the two currencies, 10 mil uh, US dollar and the, the Japanese denominated bond is uh, 1,200 million, 1, million yen. And the spot sorry, the, the current exchange rate is 110 yen for one dollar, okay? So if you, if you convert this Japanese, uh, Japanese, Japanese denominated principle back in dollar, you would realize these two principles are not equal, right? The reason why these two principles are not equal in dollar denominated uh, principle is because this is the currency that we entered some time ago. In other words, at the, at the point of origination, these two principles would have been the same because the, because the exchange rate has changed. 
since this currency swap initiate, initiated, right? Then we were told there's uh, the 12 months LIBOR interest rate in Japanese, uh, in Japan with continuous compounding for 12, 24, and 36 months is following. And then we're also told the 12 months LIBOR interest in United States is following. In other words, you should use the LIBOR rate 